Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday to you all. Good morning to uh, Art and Teresa, Joe and Charlene, Linda, Susan, Cherry, who's in Stillwater today. We sure miss you when you're not here, but we're glad you're enjoying your time in Stillwater. Good morning, Joanne. Uh, good morning, uh, Leslie. And Lori and Stacy and Stacy, let me see, I keep losing it here. Janet and Stacy are joining from Branson. Oh, wow, aren't you lucky? We are so jealous. What a beautiful place to be. And hopefully it's a little cooler than Oklahoma and Texas. Maybe, maybe not Oklahoma, but um, I know here it still feels like summer in some ways. Good morning, Barb and Gustina. Connie and Rick, Charlotte, Melissa, and Richard. Good to see everybody. Good morning, Jay and Larry. Good to see you guys too. Okay, so I missed you guys over the last couple of days, but I'm telling you, I went to a conference this weekend that was fabulous. It was at a a, a church in Corinth, and um, it was just amazing and um. It was, uh, there was just so much worship. And when I come away from those conferences, I always feel so revived um, just to be able to have some um, very uplifting worship and, um, and, and just, it, I, I learned a lot and, um, and was encouraged a lot. And so it was really a good weekend. I was really uh, grateful for the opportunity to participate. Um, got to see some friends from Georgia and um, got to talk with them a little bit and uh, from my son's church. And it was just, it was really fabulous. So very, very good weekend. And I hope you guys have had a good weekend too. I hope everybody's well, hope everybody's having fun or you've had a chance to get some rest and um, just relax a little bit. Good morning, Sherry. Good to see you uh, from Atoka, Oklahoma. All right, so we're going to start this morning in our one word for today for Spirit-Filled Living devotional book. Um, I can show it to you today because I don't have my big bright um, light that I use at home because my room is too dark, um, and so uh, I could kind of show it to you. I love to be able to put it out there so that everybody kind of knows where we are and that it's not my stuff, it's somebody else's stuff. So. Um, that's good. 
Stacy says the trees are just starting to turn the beautiful colors, but it's still hot. Oh man. Um, 85 is not too bad. We're still in the nineties. It still feels like summer, but, um, but yeah, still warm. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to cooler temperatures. I keep waiting for a cold front to come through. Um, and, and I'm so glad that you're getting to see those colors. That's just really reminds us of God's, God's handiwork, right? His, how beautiful he creates things for us to enjoy. And when we were up in Alaska, the, the trees were already starting to turn. So we got a little preview of fall up there, but I'm glad you're getting that today. All right. So we're on day 21 and the title of this is new. And it starts with Isaiah 43, 19, which says, I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. You may feel dry and weary and uninspired, but hold on. Something new is coming your way. When life comes to a standstill or things feel mundane or boring, take time to rest and refuel. Seasons like this are a prelude to something new. They lay the groundwork for what God is about to do. During these times, he's preparing you for what's coming. Though you may experience frustration while waiting for the next step, God is going to amaze and surprise you. Don't be afraid to get excited. Behind the scenes, the Lord is working on your behalf. He's about to release something unheard of in your life. Right in the middle of your desert wilderness, where it seems that you have been left to fend for yourself, your Savior is about to rush in like a flood, like a fiery sunrise after the still of night. His blessings will color the horizon of your life. And if you are tired and have lost hope, Allow the Spirit's fragrance of hope to revive your soul. Do you perceive God working in your life in a new way? If not, ask Him to show you what He's doing. So here's our reflection. What new thing am I anticipating from God? Or what new thing do I see starting to sprout in my life in this season? So, you know, as I was reading this, one of the lines that kind of stood out to me, when life comes to a standstill, or things feel mundane or boring, take time to rest and refuel. So let's talk for a minute. We know about the rest part. We know that sometimes we are tired. We have been busy. We have been battling illnesses. Um, sometimes we just feel like those warriors that we're in battle all the time against the enemy, um, against the, the things of the world, the temptations of the world. And we can come, we can become battle weary. But we take time to rest. And sometimes that's what we need is we just need time to say, you know what? Everything in, in my world right now has to stop. I have to just do something for me. I have to sit and do something that I, that, uh, you know, sit and rest, or I have to get out and do something that I really enjoy that will revive my soul. And then this refuel part, what does that look like? I mean, it can be the same thing. It could be, we get out, we work in our flower beds and we make, you know, it, it's so beautiful when you walk out in the morning and your flower beds are fresh and you see beautiful fall flowers. Maybe you plant some mums or something like that. And it just is so beautiful and, and it makes you smile. Um, it could be something else. I mean, like this weekend, that's what it was for me, just getting to worship. I mean, really loud, powerful worship. But that's that's how I worship is I, I, I just feel um, I, I get consumed by the music, by the beating of the drums. And, and um, you know, in the worship that we had, there were people that were waving flags. And, you know, that's not just for entertainment. That's a battle cry. You know, there's always a flag that's taken in when we are uh, going into battle. And so that was, you know, it was part of the worship. And it was just so inspiring and so uplifting. And, um, and so, you know, that, that's how I was refueled this weekend, because y'all all know that the last couple months have been really tough and, um, we're doing okay. As far as my dad's 
death goes, um, well, I'm going to start saying he graduated because he didn't die. He's still very much alive. In fact, more alive than he was here on this planet, on this earth. But he is, he has graduated to heaven and he is before the throne of God and, and worshiping and, um, so full of joy and, and his body completely healed. And, um, so he graduated. So anyway, but this has been really hard for us because we miss him. We love him. And so I felt myself just really weary, like it's hard to get out of the bed and, and move on. And you try to do your best, but you're grieving and it's exhausting. And there's so many different things that have changed in my life. And, and there's so many different things to take care of and to help my mom take care of. And so I was weary, but just that little moment of renewal it, it made me new. I mean, it, it it revived me and I'm excited about the future and I'm excited about ministry and um, it's just, it's beautiful. So what is it for you? What makes you feel alive? What is it that um, that is sprouting in your life that makes you excited? What is God doing in your life? And if he's not, if you feel like he's not doing anything, he's always doing something. But if you feel like he's not doing anything, ask him. Maybe spend some time, put on your headphones and put on some worship songs, whatever that may look like, old hymns, um, uplifting um, worship songs, whatever that may be for you. Just immerse yourself in that and see if things don't feel better for you. Heavenly Father, you stir our hearts and awaken our hopes. As we reach for you with expectation, speak and prepare us for all that you have in store. You are paving a way right here in the wilderness and opening up, uh, opening up refreshing streams in my desert. Thank you for doing something new in our lives, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So our declaration is God is doing something new in our lives. You can say that today when you start feeling down. God is doing something new in my life. And here's our action. Write down or tell a trusted friend the new thing that you feel God is doing in your life or what you want him to do in your life. Oh Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. All right, so today we are starting in Numbers chapter 8, starting in verse 1. And if you're following along with us, we are on page 199 in the Chronological Bible. And it says, the Lord said to Moses, give Aaron the following instructions. When you set up the seven lamps in the lampstand, place them so that their light shines forward in front of the lampstand. So Aaron did this. He set up the seven lamps so that they reflected their light forward, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The entire lampstand, from its base to its decorative blossoms, was made of beaten gold. It was built according to the exact design the Lord has shown Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and make them ceremonially clean. Do this by sprinkling them with the water of purification and have them shave their entire body and wash their clothing. And then they will be ceremonially clean. Have them bring a young bull and a grain offering of choice flour with olive oil, along with a second young bull for a sin offering. Then assemble the whole community of Israel and present the Levites at the entrance of the tabernacle. When you present the Levites before the Lord, the people of Israel must lay their hands on them. Raising his hands, Aaron must then present the Levites to the Lord as a special offering from the people of Israel, thus dedicating them to the Lord's service. Next, the Levites will lay their hands on the heads of the young bulls, present one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to the Lord to purify the Levites and make them right with the Lord. 
Then have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and raise your hands and present them as a special offering to the Lord. In this way, you will set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and, and the Levites will belong to me. After this, they may go into the tabernacle to do their work because you have purified them and presented them as a special offering. Of all the people of Israel, the Levites are reserved for me. I have claimed them for myself in place of all the firstborn sons of the Israelites. I have taken the Levites as their substitutes for all the firstborn males among the people of Israel are mine, both of people and of animals. I set them apart for myself on the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Yes, I have claimed the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons of Israel and of all the Israelites. I have assigned the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They will serve in the tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and will make sacrifices to purify the people. So no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. So Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel dedicated the Levites, carefully following all the Lord's instructions to Moses. The Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothing, their clothes, and Aaron lifted them up and presented them to the Lord as a special offering. He then offered a sacrifice to purify them and make them right with the Lord. After that, the Levites went into the tabernacle to perform their duties, assisting Aaron and his sons. So they carried out all the commands that the Lord gave Moses concerning the Levites. The Lord also instructed Moses, this is the rule of the Levites must follow. They must begin serving in the tabernacle at the age of 25, and they must retire at the age of 50. After retirement, they may assist their fellow Levites by serving as guards at the tabernacle, but they may not officiate in the service. This is how you must assign the duties of the Levites. Okay, so one thing that I want to point out first, and that was in our very first little paragraph that we started with, it's, it's uh, numbers eight, one through four, and it talks about the light. And this was step one. And, um, I think about, I think about, um, this light, it was, it was to project the light of the Lord. And there was a certain way that the, that the lights were supposed to, the candles were supposed to be set up, um, or the, the, the lights with the oil on the lampstand was supposed to be set up because it was supposed to reflect the light of the Lord. It's like God is first. And, you know, we do this, we practice this in church now when we have the kids or somebody bring in the light and they light the candles and that's done first thing. And, um, and it's done as, as a kind of a symbol like this is of God's presence with us. And then when we carry out the light when the kids come in and take the light and they carry it out, I, I get so tickled at our kids because they get so upset if the wick's not long enough and it burns out before we finish the, the last song. Because sometimes our last song is really long. Um, and the kids, you know, they're, they've got so much anxiety sitting there because they, they want so badly to carry that light out. I don't even know if they really know, even though we sometimes try to tell them what that means. But what they're what but I think it's I think it's really precious that they get so upset when the light blows out because the whole point of carrying the light out is to remind us that we carry the light of Christ out into the world, that we're going out into our mission field. And you and I are the light bearers. We're the ones that that are filled with God's spirit, his light. He is light. And we go out into a very dark world and we illuminate it. We illuminate it by his spirit. And so um, that that was step one in this whole ceremony. And then the Levites were dedicated. I found it interesting. Yesterday, we had a really awesome woman pastor that she's a, a speaker and all of that. And um, she she had a powerful message. And it was especially um, 
touch my heart. But she told us, she said that she can trace her, her, uh, descendant or her, uh, the people that she comes from, that she, she is a descendant of the tribe of Levi, that she didn't even realize at one point that she was Jewish until one day her father told her that she was. And he told her that they come from the tribe of Levi. Now that's powerful because as I was reading this and they were set apart for the Lord, generation after generation after generation have continued to fill this role. They, they, that it has been passed down. It's preachers. We know this generationally in my own family. My dad's a pastor. I'm a pastor. My son's in ministry. I believe wholeheartedly that my nephew is going to go into ministry. He's showing some interest in that. I've never really talked to him about his call per se, but I know that he, he's, he's preparing for college. He's, he'll be in college next year. And and he's thinking about Bible studies. Um, and I just, I love that. My niece is very involved in ministry, even though she too is in college. Um, you know, I, I see my grandkids being in ministry. We'll see what God has for them, but there it's a generational thing. And, um, on my son's other side of the family, his great grandfather was a pastor. His grandfather was a pastor. Um, and, and so it's just passed down. And so um, so this is a very important role. This is not just going to affect these people, but it's going to affect generations and they are set apart for the Lord. And they go through this whole purification process. As I was reading this, I kept thinking about our own process of anointing the leaders in the church. And one of the pieces that we, we don't necessarily, um, spend a whole lot of time talking about is the purification part of really, um, you know, have we confessed our sins? Are we holding a grudge against someone in our life? Because those are things that are, are not good attributes of a leader in the church. You know, we're supposed to let those go. We're supposed to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. And so, you know, we, we may be set apart for certain duties in the church, but there's more to it than that. We we are being called, especially elders in the church, we are being called to be spiritual leaders. That means that we need to be uh we need to be purified. We need to be um we need to make sure that we are living the way God tells us to live. And we're not perfect. We will fall short. God forgives us, thank goodness for his mercy and his grace. But we should always be mindful of the fact that we're not just elders on Sunday. We're elders um, all, all week long. We are elders in the church. So we care for our flocks. And, and we can't really do that really well unless we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when we are not purified, when we are not living obediently with Christ, then it's really hard for us to have that anointing. That anointing will um, will will leave us. And the reason is, is because um, when we are in sin, then we we have separated ourselves from the Lord. So, you know, it's not just a Sunday morning deal. It's not just a once a week deal when we call our flocks or when we, you know, when we do something like that. It's it's all day, every day for the duration that we are elders. So many of you on here are elders. So think about that. Um, think about how special that is to be anointed and set apart. And your church saw that you, um, I, I hope, were very prayerful and mindful of who, who has been called as elder and didn't just call people because they've been in the church a long time or because people like them, because that's not a reason to be an elder. And I do know, I have known a few elders um, in, throughout the years who should never have been elders because they didn't have the heart for it. And, um, and, and they held grudges and they did all sorts of things. So just something to think about. Maybe today, 
Um, this is Sunday. This is the Lord's day. This is the day we go into our churches and we serve as elders. Perhaps when we get off of this um, this this uh, broadcast, then perhaps we can can um, maybe anoint ourselves with oil and ask for God's anointing, purify ourselves, confess our sins. Um, ask God's help in letting go of any hardships that we feel in our families, in our church, in our neighborhoods, with anybody, so that we can serve God the best way we know how. And that is with our full heart. So um, that's what I take away from it today, from today's reading. All right. So we uh, uh, will go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we just, I just want to pray for you guys today. We we still have a lot of the same uh, concerns, the people that are ill, um, and we just, we want to lift them up. But today is the Lord's day. And I just, I want to pray, prepare us for worship. Most gracious heavenly father, I thank you so much for this precious group of people for they are precious in your sight. You know, every detail of our life, you care about everything that we go through. And Lord, I pray that you will meet the needs that are that are here. I pray, Lord, that, that you will meet the needs that we have, that you will heal bodies of those that we love and care about, those that are in our congregations. I pray, Lord, that you will comfort those who need comforting. And I pray, Lord, that you will lead our nation into righteousness. Lord, it was declared by a uh, previous uh, president several years ago that we are not a Christian nation. And Lord, we rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that, that even though we have people from all over, we, we, um, we believe that our faith is, is, um, is so life-giving and and we believe we, we we practice this faith because we believe that Jesus Christ is is son of the living God and we have taken you Jesus as our lord and savior and we know lord that this is our mission field and i pray lord that you will just revive that passion for you again lord I pray, Lord, that that instead of the younger generations drifting further and further away from you, and sometimes the older generations too, because they get hurt in churches, because sometimes we're too judgmental or whatever the case may be, Lord, things are said and we take it to heart instead of practicing forgiveness, whatever that reason may be, Lord, I pray that you will draw your people back to you. I pray, Lord, that you will um, that, that, that scripture that says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and savior. I pray Lord that you will move us closer to that every day. And Lord, I pray that you will give us strength to be your people. I pray Lord that for your Holy spirit anointing on each one of us, as we carry the light of Christ into our churches, I pray Lord, that um, as we go out into the world this week, into our mission field, that we will also carry that light, that it won't be extinguished by our sins, that it won't be extinguished by our negativity, but instead that our lights will burn brighter for you so that people will come to know you, so that people will be drawn to the light. I pray, Lord, today, that um, as we prepare for worship, that you will fill our church buildings with your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fill the words of the pastors preaching across the globe um, with your words. And today is World Communion Sunday, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will be mindful that we we share this meal that we are coming to today. We share it together, not only in our own congregations, but with everybody else across the globe. For your body is a big body and you have called us all. And I pray, Lord, that today that might mean something different to us. Father, we praise you and we thank you 
for your love and your mercy and your grace. Be with us today and always. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Loving God, even in the midst of the world's pain and sorrow, we can encounter your joy. Show us that such joys come when we are caught up in works of mercy and find ourselves unable to distinguish between our blessings and those of our brothers and sisters. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here in the morning. I hope to see those of you in this area in church today. We have a potluck dinner. It's going to be an awesome day. Bring your first fruits offerings um, and, and uh, share with the community. And for the rest of you, I can't wait to see you guys in the morning. Take care. Have a great day.